This is the Christian Family and Choice Radio, 92.9 FM. Your life, your salvation, your choice. Invite you to get something to write with and something to write on. Let us pray. My wife is on assignment, so I'm going to pray for her tonight. Father, just thank you for another day in the land of the living, the opportunities and privileges. Thank you for your word, Lord, that's still alive and powerful and sharper than any two edged sword. Today, Lord, we're going to stand in your words because the entrance of your word gives us light. We're going to use that light as a guide of our part and a lamp to our feet. Father, we thank you for the victory in Jesus. There's victory in honor. We give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory because all belong to you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. This is the Christian Family on Choice Radio. Get something to write with and something to write on and hear what God is saying to us in his holy, written, precious words. Now, we only look at these words of God that are settled forever, settled in heaven. Every time I look at these things, there's always new facets of revelation, and I hope you get new facets of revelation. We could never exhaust this. And anybody said that they know it all is some mental case or they're going to asylum or coming from one. The Apostle Paul who wrote most of the New Covenant said, we know in part, we prophesy in part, we see through a glass dark, and we don't know it all. And he writing to his son in the faith, Timothy says, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. He said, Timothy from a child was known the Holy Scripture. Then you look at the early church, the Burian Christian, they search the Scriptures out daily to see if these things were so. Well, we need to do the same thing, search the scriptures out daily. And Solomon, the wisest man of his day, says the glory of God to conceal a thing. And it's the honor of a king to search it out. So we should always see what God is saying to us in his words. And think about this. These words minister to our spirit. Our spirit's are eternal being. We're going to live forever somewhere, up or down. So this, to me, is very, very, very important. Everything else is secondary. This is primary when you're dealing with eternal life. Because the days of our years in this body is three scores and ten, reason of strength, four scores on the low side, and the high side you can go up to 120 years based on the Bible. You can go more than that if you want to, but that's the low side and the high side. So we have insurance to cover us up to that side. So after that you leave this body, you're going to live somewhere. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Well, if you ought to be with Lord Satan or with Lord Jesus. You make that decision. Whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you didn't call upon the name of the Lord, you're not saved. If you're saved, God is your spiritual father. If you're not saved, Satan is your spiritual father. Somebody say, I'm just here in the middle. I'm neither here or there. I'm not for darkness or for light. I'm just here in the middle. <laughs> no such thing. You're there in light or darkness. If you're not born again, when Adam sinned again, everybody dies spiritually. And you have to be born again. If you're not born again, you're going to hell when you die. Satan is the spiritual father. Misery like company. If you're born again, then... When you die, to leave the body to be present with the Lord. Now, those of us who are born twice, we're going to die once. It's appointed on the man once to die. If we was born from a water womb physically, then we were born again spiritually. We were born twice, we're going to die once. But there are folks who are only born one time from the mother womb. They was never born again. Well, then they're dead twice. You're going to hell when you die. From there, you're going before the great white throne. Then you're going to the lake for all eternity. Amen. Hallelujah. We want to look at something, just review a little bit here and see something else here. In Matthew chapter 25, God and Mammon, and let's see what God is saying to us. We invite you to get something to write with and something to write on. Matthew chapter 25, and look at these three pictures. And look at these, because as I said before, we always say this thing, always have to go back and say it over and over and over. You say, if everything that Jesus Christ had done was put in the books, the world itself couldn't hold the books. So they leave a lot of things out to leave this in. So whatever they leave in here have to be very important. That's how I look at it. And if these words are forever settled in heaven, when we get to heaven, we're going to see these words up there. Because they're forever settled in heaven. Matthew 25, and he made a statement here. He, wise man went and give talent to some of his servants, and he tell them what to do. One went and get five, the other one get ten, and he get so much talent, he did something with it. Well, look at something with this, one of these servants, look what he did. And sometimes you could do this, and God is looking to do the same way. He gives you something. You have ability to do things. You were born, that was built inside of you. You were predestined before the foundation was. So some things were built inside of you. So here this man, he gives talent to this one, he gives talent to everyone, everyone according to his several ability. 
But look at these three pictures here. Look at this, Matthew chapter 25. Look at two verses. Look at 26 and 27. Look at those two verses. I have a red lady edition. The head of the church is speaking. And the apostle Matthew is recording. Look at those two verses. Matthew chapter 25. Look at 26 and 27. And his Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I did not sow, and gather where I did not sow. Thou art is therefore to put my money into the exchange, and at my coming you shall receive my own with usury. So here God gave everybody the same talent at the same time. They didn't do he call him wicked. Now what are you calling you with what he gave you? And notice the punishment for him when you come towards the end, when you go down to the end of that chapter. Look at the 30th verse. Look at because he didn't do what God gave. Look at the 30th verse. You could read all of it. Look at the 30th verse. Cast the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So because you didn't use what God he called you a wicked servant, and look at the punishment for you. We're going to read those two verses again. And we give everybody one get, he say, faithful servant. Well done, thou faithful servant. Be one who didn't get in. Look at what, who didn't do anything. Look at those two verses again. Look at 26 and 27. Look at those, uh, the Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knowest I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not sow. Thou oughtest therefore to put my money into the exchange and I come in and receive my own with, with user. And they do something with it. He didn't do anything. But look at the punishment when go around the 30th verse. Look at the 30th verse. Cast that on profitable servant. So he's on profitable servant. Now look at the next one. Look at Luke chapter 16. Look at Luke chapter 16. Now he's unprofitable. Well, look at what he, look at the punishment for the unprofitable servant. Cast him into the outer darkness where they'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. God give you ability to do things they didn't use. He call you a wicked servant. Look at Luke chapter 16. Get something to write with and something to write on here what God said. Now this is the one with the unjust stored. He gave him for you to become a store. You store, you in charge of everything. You hire, you fire, you set salary, tell time in vocation. You do everything. You're in charge of everything. For somebody to put you to be in charge of everything, I mean, they have to put a lot of confidence in you and trust in you. you the resume, when you presented the resume for that job, that resume has to be very good for him to push you, give you everything. I mean, turn his back, you running all, you writing the checks, you paying the bills, you hiring, you firing, for you to be a store. You're in charge of everything. So for somebody to give all that to you, he has to trust you. Your resume has to be very high. To convince him that he could put you to be stored. And he put you to be stored and what you're doing with what God give you. Look at this one here. 16, look at the 8th verse. The Lord commended the unjust thought because he had done wisely for the turn of this world and uh, their generation wiser to turn the kingdom. So the unjust thought. He trusts everything in him, but he misused it. He used it for his benefit. <laughs> Not for the man's benefit, for his benefit. So the first one is unprofitable servant. He didn't do anything with it. He cast him into outer darkness. This one here is the unjust toward. He put him in charge of everything. He used it for his benefit. He's going to take care of his welfare. Can you see that? So this is number two. Look at number three. Look at Big John chapter 12. You tell me who is the worst one. The unprofitable servant. The unjust toward. Look at this one. Big John chapter 12. All these lessons are for us. He's speaking to us. Big John chapter 12, and here Judas Iscariot is the treasury secretary for our Lord and Savior. Wherever Jesus ministered, always a great multitude. So he's in charge of all that money. He's the treasury secretary for our Lord and Savior. Look at something here. Look at Big John chapter 12. Look at the six verse. Look at the six verse. And he said, not because he cared for the poor, but because he's a thief and he had a bag and bear it a pudding. So he's collecting all the money for our Lord and Savior. And he's stealing the money. And the only way Jesus knows about it because they buy a word of knowledge. So you have here the unprofitable servant, you have the unjust toward, and you have this one stealing from the tithes and offering. Who is the worst? Which one of these are worse? You have first the unprofitable servant, his punishment is cast in the outer darkness, weeping national teeth. Then you have the unjust toward, taking care of himself. He taking care of himself. He used the man well to benefit himself. And now look at this one. He collecting all the money for our Lord and Savior. He have some nerves. Stealing the money. Look at the 12, look at the 6 verse. This he said, not, the, go back, look, go by the 3rd verse. Then took Mary a pong of ointments, panicard, very costly. Ointment at the feet of Jesus and wipe of feet with a heel. And the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Then said one of the disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, who should betray him? Why wasn't this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? This he said, not because he cared for the poor, 
but because he was a thief. So you have one is a thief, you have the unjust toward, and you have the unprofitable servant. Who is worse? Who is worse? Which one of them is worse? Look at what he said. Look at the night segment. Look at the book of Luke. <clears throat> Look at Luke chapter 16. Luke chapter 16. Look at the size night, tonight segment. Get something to write with and something to write on here what God is saying to us in his holy written precious words. Now we look at the unjust, we read all those scriptures before. And he's saying something here to us in Luke chapter 16. Look at the ninth verse. And I say unto you, make yourself friends of mammon of unrighteousness that when you fail, it shall receive you into the everlasting habitation. Well, that's, that's a, that's, that seems to be sort of strange, make your friends of mammon of unrighteousness. Well, it seems like it's kind of strange. He tells you to be friends, and you look, at, look, at, look at verse 9, and I say unto you, make yourself friends of mammon of unrighteousness. When that's wealth from out in the world, from the kingdom of darkness, make friends with it. Well, look at something in the book of Luke chapter 4. Jesus had an encounter with Satan. He had an encounter with Satan and he said something, we want to extract a piece of that and see, going back over to that verse there, make your friends with those. Because remember, when Adam sinned in the garden, Satan became the God of this world. And everybody was in darkness until Jesus Christ come. And when Jesus Christ come, Adam take us from light to darkness, Jesus Christ take us from darkness to light, those of us who receive it. So he's the God of this world. Paul called him the God of this world. Jesus said he's the prince of this world. Now look at something here in Luke chapter 4. And you're picking up part of the encounter that Jesus had with the king of the kingdom of darkness. Luke chapter 4. And look at this. Let's read a few verses. Look at something. Make your friends mammon of unrighteousness. Make friends with them. Look at this. Luke chapter 4. Look at verse 5. And the devil taketh him into high mountain and show him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment time. And the devil said, that All this power will I give thee and the glory of them that was delivered unto me, and whomsoever with I give it. If thou wilt dare so worship me, all shall be thine. And Jesus answered the servant, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thou serve. So Satan is saying to Jesus Christ, All the kingdoms of his mind, and whomsoever would I give it. Whomsoever would I give it. And we look in other scriptures in the book of Revelation, the beast give power to, the, the dragon give power to the beast. So he's saying, look at that fifth verse, the devil taketh him into a high mountain and show him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. The devil said unto him, all this power will I give thee and the glory of them it was delivered unto me and whomsoever will I give it? Whomsoever will I give it? Whomsoever will I give it? Look at, if thou wilt therefore worship me, all shall be done. Jesus said, let get thee hence Satan. Go back to Luke chapter 16 all his mind. He is the God of this world. Jesus called him the prince of this world. Paul called him the God of this world. Second Corinthians 4, 4, he called him the God of this world. So he's telling us here in this verse, make, make friends with them. How are you going to get people from darkness to light? You know, salvation is free, but the pipeline costs money. To get it on radio, to get it in television, to get Bibles and tracts, to go in different parts of the world, to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Well, for you to get into all the world, for you to get into Africa, into Asia, into Europe, Central America, South America, throughout North America, it costs money. Salvation is free, but the pipeline costs money. All is mine. Whomsoever will I give it? So you're telling him here in this 16, 16 chapter 9 verse, I say unto you, make yourself friends of mammon of unrighteousness, that when you fail, you shall read everlasting habitation. Notice he's talking about everlasting. He's talking about salvation because anything everlasting is spirit. Because this body have a shelf life. The outward man is perishing day by day, but the inward man is renewed. So he said that the everlasting habitation. Well, if it, anything is everlasting, have to do with salvation. So get the money and use it to get people from darkness into light. Look at, let's go to the book of Genesis and see something. Genesis chapter 40. When let's go there tonight. Make friends with them. Those folks run this stuff. Make friends with them and get their stuff and bring it over on our side. Now look at something here. <clears throat> In Genesis chapter 41. Get somebody to write with us, somebody to write on. <clears throat> Genesis chapter 41. And this is a story about Joseph. 
with Pharaoh. Well, Pharaoh represents the kingdom of darkness. But he wants some of the things that Pharaoh have. Whatever Pharaoh have, he can benefit our kingdom because he have it. When Adam sinned, the God all he be Satan become the God of this world. And he just had encounter with Jesus, say, Whomsoever would I give it? All the kingdom is mine, and whomsoever would I give it? Well, here is Joseph on our side working for Pharaoh. Pharaoh had a dream, nobody could interpret the dream, so they sent and get Joseph to interpret the dream of Pharaoh. And look at this. Genesis chapter 41. Let's pick it up the 37 verse. Genesis chapter 41, look at verse 37. And the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and the eyes of all his servants. And Pharaoh said unto his servant, Can we find such a one as this man whom the Spirit of God is? And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as the God had showed thee this, there is none as discreet and wise as thou art. Thou shalt be over my house according to all thy words, and all thy people shall rule, and in the throne will I be greater, only in the throne will I be greater than thee. Pharaoh said unto the sea, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh took up the ring from off his hand and put it on Joseph's hand and array him with vessels of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck. And he made him to ride in the second chariot, which he had. And he cried unto him, and they cried unto him, and bowed their knees, and made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without me shall no man lift up his hands between all Egypt. Well, that's a wonderful position. That's a position you can use to get people into the kingdom of life. And you could minister to Pharaoh because nobody have the answer to it. He called all the wise men and the sorcerers and so on. Nobody have it. So here he get next to Pharaoh and Pharaoh him to run all of Egypt. Well, he's going to use that for something. He said there going to be seven years of plenty and then seven years of farming. When you have the seven years of plenty, stockpile 20% throughout all of Egypt. So when the farming come, you'll have goods to supply all hard times. Put aside something. All those are principles that you could use. When things go, the Bible says when there's light, walk in the light. When things are good with you, use those opportunities. We have had people in positions, political position, in banking position, in different position. They help us greatly. We couldn't do it alone. Those people are retired, and some of them move on and do other things now. You see, when there's light, walking in light. He get an opportunity to be next to Pharaoh. Use it. Use it. Look at 41. Go down to the end of that chapter. The famine started to take its toll throughout. Genesis chapter 41. Go down to the end of the chapter, verse 55. As he used it. When there's light, walk in the light, so you become children of light. And as Jesus said there, the children of the world, the children of that kingdom of darkness, they use it for their benefit. Well, you use it for your benefit. Genesis chapter 41, look at verse 55. And when all the land of Egypt was farming, the people cried unto Pharaoh for bread. And Pharaoh said unto all the Egyptians, Go unto Joseph, and whatever he say unto you, do. And the famine was over all the face of the earth, over all the face of the earth, over all the face of the earth. And Joseph opened up all the storehouses and sold unto the Egyptians, and the famine waxed so in all the land of Egypt. Look at verse 50, 57. And all the countries came unto Egypt to Joseph for to buy corn, because the farming was so in all the lands. You see, that's a wonderful building. Now his father and they is over in the land of Canaan. And they run out of bread over there, so they have to come down in Egypt. And in the process of time, Joseph make himself known unto the children, unto his brethren. Because the famine spread out all over. So Joseph now is in a position to sell food to his father and so on. He make himself known in the process of time. And his father then came down. Go down to the 46th chapter. Look at what you could do. When God put you in certain positions, you could use it for certain things. Now the famine was very sore. And Joseph make himself known to his brethren. And he went and tell Pharaoh, his father, and he wanted to come in the lands. He got a good land for them and put them in the land of Goshen. And all the farmers and all the trouble they have in Goshen is explained because he's in that position he could preserve. But look at something. Look at who is he preserving. And he get them to come down into the land of Egypt, put them in a part of Egypt called Goshen. I mean, this is blessed land. And all the other problems they're having, Goshen is ex exempt. He take care of them. Now look at something. Genesis 46. Pick it up at the 8th verse. Genesis 46. Pick it up at the 8th verse. Look at something. He sent for all his brothers and fathers to come down into Egypt to join him down into Egypt. But look at something. Genesis chapter 46. Get something to write with something to write on. Use your position. Make friends with them. Or they have access to television and to radio and to certain things and to airlines and certain things. You may need somebody to get access to go to Africa and to go to Asia. You make friends with them. Don't be hostile. Make friends with them. They control it because of what Adam did. Everybody dies spiritually. And when Jesus Christ come, he said, what? The silver is mine, the gold is mine. But who got it? Who got it? Look at it. Genesis 46, pick it up at the 8th verse. Got something to write with and something to write on. Look at the 8th verse. Genesis 
chapter 46. Look at the eighth verse. Look at who is coming into Egypt. He, look at this. Who's coming to Egypt? All because of the position that Joseph is in. He was able to preserve his brothers and sisters and bring them into Egypt and put them in a special part of Egypt. But look at who's coming into Egypt. Genesis chapter 46. Look at the eighth verse. These are the names of the children of Israel which came into Egypt. Jacob and his sons, Reuben. Jacob firstborn and his sons, the Reuben was Hanok and Palu and Hazron and Kami. The sons of Simeon was Jamiel and Jamin and Ohad and Jakim and Zohar and Shual, the sons of the Canaanite woman. And the sons of Levi was Gershom, Kohat, Mary, and the sons of Judah. This is one of verse 12. And the sons of Judah was O, Ernan, and Shelah, and Pharez and Zara. But O and Onan died in the land of Canaan, and the sons of Pharez and Hezron and Hamil. Now look at who he bringing in there. He bringing in Judah. Somebody says, so what? Well, look at who is he preserving because he in that position. He bringing in, look at that 12 verse. The sons of Judah was Ur and Onan and Shelah, Pharez and Zara. Well, Ur and Onan died in the land of Canaan and they keep Shelah. And then Tamar dressed like a prostitute and she went in and had a fear with Judah. And they had Zara and Pharez. But that going on to our Lord and Savior. He bring them in. Now, if he had let them stay in the land of Canaan, they would have died and we'll have no Judah. Look at this. Look at this. Look at Matthew. Look at Matthew chapter 1. Use your position because he used what he had, he get his family to come down. But look at who is in the lineage. Matthew chapter 1. Get something to write with and something to write on. You open, you could get some doors open. Make friends with those folks who got it. Get access to certain things that you have to preach the gospel. Look at it. I know it notice it's the everlasting habitation. Well, your your body is not everlasting, so you couldn't be talking about your body. The days of the years is three scores and ten reasons of four scores. On the low side, the high side, 120 years. So it couldn't be talking about everlasting habitation. So get them saved. So when you go to the other side, all those people who get saved, yeah, you can see them on the other side. Everlasting. Spirit is everlasting. Bodies are not everlasting. The outward man is perishing day by day, but the inward man is renewed day by day. Look at this, Matthew chapter 1. Look at this. Look at this. Matthew chapter 1, pick it up at verse 1. Get something to write with, something to write on. Matthew chapter 1 and verse 1. The book of generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham begot Isaac, Isaac begot Jacob, Jacob begot Judas and his brethren. Judas begot Pharez and Zara of Tamar. Pharez begot Esram, Esram begot Aram. Aram begot Aninadab, Aninadab begot Nason. Nason begot Salmon, Salmon begot Boaz of Rahab. Boaz begot Obed of Ruth. Obed begot Jesse. Jesse begot David the king. David the king begot Solomon, who was the wife of Uriah. Solomon begot Rehoboam. Rehoboam begot Abiah. Abiah got Asa. Asa begot Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat got Joram. Joram begot Uzziah. Uzziah begot Jotam. Jotam begot Akaz. Akaz begot Ezekiah. Ezekiah begot Manasseh. Manasseh begot Ammon. Ammon begot Josiah. Josiah begot Jeconias and his brethren about the time that they were carried into Babylon. After they were brought to Babylon, Jeconias begot Satiel, Satiel begot Zerubbabel, Zerubbabel begot Abud, Abud begot Eliakim, Eliakim begot Azor, Azor begot Zadok, Zadok begot Akim, Akim begot Eliud, Eliud begot Eliezer, Eliezer begot Matan, Matan begot Jacob, Jacob begot Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom is born Jesus called the Christ. So you see, because Joseph was in that position, able to preserve the tribe of Judah. And because we preserve the tribe of Judah, we get Jesus Christ. So if that tribe was destroyed, we'd have no savior and all of us die and go into hell. So because he was in that position, he preserved that tribe. He bring in all his fathers. But one of the tribes that was Judah. And Jesus come from the tribe of Judah. Look at the book of Hebrews. Look at the book of Hebrews, the generation of Jesus. Look at the book of Hebrews chapter 7. Hebrews chapter 7. Get something to write with or something to write on while I'm cooking a meeting. Look at Hebrews. Look at Hebrews chapter 7. Look at Hebrews chapter 7. Put your finger on the 14th verse. Hebrews chapter 7. Put your finger on the 14th verse. For it is evident that our Lord's proud of the tribe of Judah, which tribe Moses speak not of concerning the priesthood. As yet, are more evident that after the similitude of Melchizedek, there arise another priest who is made not after the law of carnal commandments, but after the power of endless life. And he testified, Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. 
So Jesus came from the tribe of Judah. So if Joseph, when he was in that position next to Pharaoh, had an opportunity to let his family come into Egypt, put them into a special part of Egypt called Goshen, and preserve that seed of Judah, we'll have no Jesus Christ. And all of us would die and go straight to hell. God, the Messiah come through the tribe of Judah. Can you read? Look at the 14 verses. It's evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, tribe which Moses speak not of the concern in the priesthood. So Jesus come from there. Look at the book of Revelation. Use your position when you have it. Revelation chapter 5. Get somebody to write with and somebody to write on. Use it. When you get that opportunity in those positions you have, use it for the kingdom. Use it for the kingdom. That it will receive you into everlasting. You see, the, the unjust Lord, he used it for his benefit. Well, he's going to die in the process of time. All the people who do him favor, they're going to die in the process of time. So that's only temporary. But this is eternal. You use yours for eternal. He uses for the benefit himself. Well, he's going to die in the process of time. But you could live forever. Any man in Christ is a new creature. All things are past. We all, all things become new. We have eternal life. Revelation chapter 5, pick it up at verse 1. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written which was had the backside sealed with seven seas. And I saw a strong angel proclaim it with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to lose the seven seas thereof. No man in heaven nor in earth nor under the earth was able to open the book or to look thereon. And I wept much because no man was found worthy to open, to read the book, neither to look thereon. Look at the fifth verse. Put your finger on the fifth verse. Look at the fifth verse. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not, behold, the land of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. So Judah came from the tribe of Judah. So because Joseph was in that position, he used it to bring his family in there. And part of his family was Judah. Can you see that? The book of Hebrews, chapter 1. It's amazing that folks, God will put you in some position whether next to the president, next to the mayor, next to the governor, next to somebody important, a bank manager or something, open certain doors for you. If we hadn't certain doors, we'd never have make it. God put certain people there, and of course, some have entertained angels unaware. Be kind to strangers. Some have entertained angels unaware. Look at this here. Look at, look at this. Hebrews chapter 1. Look at verses 1 and 2. Look at those two verses. Hebrews chapter 1. Look at verses 1 and 2. God who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophet. So the whole covenant came to us by the prophet. So if you get rid of the prophets, <laughs> you have no old covenant. Huh? You have no lineage coming out of Jesus. Look at those verses. Who at in these last days spoke to us by his son, whom he appointed heirs of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. But the first part we're looking at, God who at sundry times in diverse manners speak in time past on the fathers by the prophets. They come by the prophets. Look at the book of Numbers. Look at Numbers chapter 12. We get into something a little while. Use your position on your gather there. God put you in those positions, open those doors for you. Look at Joseph. I mean, he used it, put him right there to do that. He was in a position to preserve life and bring in the tribe of Judah. Jesus came from the tribe of Judah. Numbers chapter 12. And look at the sixth verse. Numbers chapter 12. Look at the sixth verse. And he said, Hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, God, will make myself unto him in visions and speak all to him in dreams. If there's a prophet among you. So if you get rid of the prophets, you will have no visions and you will have no dreams. He speaks by trust many ways, but you say, if there's a prophet among you, if, if, if there's a prophet among you, I'll speak to him like that. Now look at something here, and this guy have a position. Look at First Kings chapter 18. First Kings chapter 18. Get something to write with and something to write on. Man. First Kings chapter 18. Now look at this. Because of Ahab and Jezebel saying, God shut up the heaven three years and six months, there was no rain, there was great famine throughout all the land. And now after three years, they pray again, and now they're going to have rain. But look at this guy. Look at, look at he used his position to do what? If there's a prophet among you, the old covenant came to us by the prophets. Uh, the new covenant came by the apostles, by Jesus through his apostles. 
Uh, if there's a prophet, I go speak to you. So if there's not a prophet there, who going to speak to you? He can't speak to you. Under the old covenant, three people have the spirit of God upon them. The prophet, the king, and the priest. That's it. To stand in those offices. So if you get rid of the prophets, who are you going to speak to? God can't speak to you. God hear it, not sinners. And, and the natural man receive not the things of the spirit of God. So you need the prophets. But look at this guy using his position to save the prophets. Look at this. First Kings chapter 18. Use your positions for eternal benefits. First Kings chapter 18. Pick it up at verse 1. And it came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year, saying, Go show thyself unto Ahab, and I'll send rain upon the earth. And Elijah went to show himself unto Ahab, and there was a sore famine in Samaria. And Ahab called Obadiah, which was the governor of his house. He's governor of Ahab's house. He's working for this ungodly man. You know Ahab and Jezebel, how evil they take evil to the next level. But he there, Obadiah, is working the house as the governor, running his house, just like how Joseph was the governor of uh, Potiphar's house. He's in that house. Look at it here. God verse 3, Ahab called Obadiah, which was governor of his house. Now Obadiah feared God greatly. Look at the fourth verse. Look at the fourth verse. He used his position. What do you have there? If there's a prophet among you, I, God, will put my words in his mouth. The old covenant came to us by the prophets. Look at the fourth verse. And it was so that when Jezebel had cut off the prophets of the Lord, that Obadiah took a hundred prophets and hid them fifty in the caves and fed them with bread and water. You see, he was in a position to head them and feed them. If they let him starve, they'll die. Leave it for Jezebel, she'll kill all of them. Huh? But he used his position, Obadiah used his position to save the look at verse, look at verse 4. It was so that Jezebel cut off the prophets of the Lord. Obadiah took a hundred prophets and did hid them by fifties in a cave and fed them with bread and water. What are you doing with the prophets? What are you doing with the prophets? Amen. Look at the book of Nehemiah. Use your position. There are people listening over there in position to do things and they're not doing nothing for the things of God. They could open certain doors to let the kingdom as we come towards the end time. We know there's an escalation of evil activity. Evil men getting worse and worse. Deceiving and being deceived. And you put in a certain position there, not because of your education, not because of your color of skin, not because of you're cute or whatever you think you have or your money. You put there for a reason. You put there as a light in dark places. You put there as salt to prevent decay and add flavor. That's what you put there for. You see, over there, use his position. Joseph used his own to preserve that seed, especially Judah. Amen. Nehemiah, chapter 2, Nehemiah, I mean, he had a comfortable job. And they bring news to him, tell him how the walls of Jerusalem was broken down. And he wept so. And he went before his boss, Artaxerxes. And look at this. Nehemiah, chapter 2. Look at he using his position to further the kingdom. Watch this. Nehemiah, chapter 2. When I read these things, man, please, bless God. I hope this will stimulate some of you to do something. You and a person can do stuff. You could open certain doors. Nehemiah chapter 2, pick it up at verse 1. And it came to pass in the month of Nisan, the 20th year of Artaxerxes the king, there was wine before him. The king wine was before him. And I took up the wine and I gave it unto the king. Now I has never been before time in, sad in his presence. So he probably with a long face. He come before the king to serve with a long face. Wherefore the king said unto me, why is thy countenance sad? Seeing that thou art not sick, this is nothing else but sorrow of heart. Then I was very so afraid. Well, look at it. Verse 3. I said unto the king, Let the king live forever. Why should not my countenance be sad when the city and the palace of my father's supplica had been wa wasted and the gates thereof was consumed with fire? And the king said unto me, What shall I do? But I make thy request. What do you make a request for? Now he's in position that the king has a, a mean a t massive authority to pass it on to Nehemiah. Then the king said on verse 4, What shall thou do? Make thy request. So I prayed to God of heaven. And I said unto the king, If it please the king, let thy servant found favor in thy sight, and would he send me to, to Judah and to the city of my father's supplica that I may build it? And the king said unto me, and the queen said unto by him, How long shall it be? And how shall be returned? And please the king to set a time. See, you, when you're going to do these things, you set a time. You don't go to Lord Igyag and play the fool all over the place. But the king gave him permission to go and be very old. Give him a lady. You ask him. But look at what else you're going to give him. Look at it. Look at verse 7. Moreover, I said unto the king, If it please the king, let letters be given unto me to the governors beyond the river, that they convey me over till I come to Judah. And the letters of Asap, the keepers of the king's forest, that they may give me timber to make the beams of the gate and the palace that are put in it unto the house, and the walls of the city, and the house that I shall enter into. And the king granted me according to the good hands of the Lord was upon me. Then I came to the governor beyond the river and gave him the king's letter. Now the king had sent captains of the army and horsemen with me. 
So you see, he get all that benefit he had. He give him permission to go. He give him letters permit to get all the material he need. He give him escort him. He give him everything that he need. Are you going to rebuild the temple? Well, really, it's as well as you want to build the temple, he rebuild the walls. So put the temple inside of the walls. So he gave him permission, but he used his position to do that. Somebody said, what's the big deal? It's a big deal. Back in the old covenant, God was in a box, the Ark of the Covenant. And they needed a place, if the walls break down, and they break down, when Nebuchadnezzar, he destroy everything. Destroy the temple, the walls, they tear down everything. So he's going to rebuild the walls, and Ezra going to rebuild the temple. Well, you need a place to put the Ark of the Covenant. But what's in the Ark of the Covenant? Well, in the Ark of the Covenant, you have manna, a pot with manna. In the Ark of the Covenant, you have Aaron's rod. In the Ark of the Covenant, you have the tables that God wrote on, the Ten Commandments. And you also have the law. In that. So wherever that presence is, the Shekinah glory is going to be there. <laughs> so if you don't have a place for the Shekinah glory to be, well, you don't have no place for God to be. Wherever they move that box, God is going to be there. So he rebuilding that wall so that they could worship the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So he get the permission, but, but look at, he uses position to get material, he get permit, he get everything he need, and even get escort, horsemen to escort him back to do it. And he give him time, he rebuild the wall in record time. You see that? So he used his position to get all this material. Look at verse 8 and the letter. Look at verse 7. Moreover, I said unto the king, if it please the king, let letters be given to him with the governor beyond the river that may come me over until I come to Judah. Give him protection to go him. The governor to, you know, so the king, give, give him permission to give him protection to take him all day. Verse 8. And letters of Asab, the keeper of the king's forest, that he may give me timber to make the beams of the gate of the palace, where to put in out of the house, and the walls of the city for the house shall enter into and the king granted me according to the you see that he used his position to go and rebuild the walls notice not to go and give party notice he's not going to build some house for himself for God use it for God and he put back there some place to put the ark of the covenant can you see that so he used his position for that look at the book of Esther look at the book of Esther sometimes these things are tucked out there and we have meanings for us today but nobody take the time to show us don't get me wrong we have a million things to learn of a million things to learn. The book of Esther, chapter 2. And look at something. Sometimes these things are just tucked in there. I mean, God just put these things to bless us if we would listen. Faith commit by hearing, by hearing, by hearing, by hearing, by the word of God. Esther, chapter 2. Now, King Ahasuerus had a queen called Vashti. She misbehaved and replaced her with Esther and so on. But look at, look at where they come, look at the tribe that they came from. Somebody says, so what? All right, so what? Esther, chapter 2. <coughs> and look at verses 5 and 6. Look at those two verses, 5 and 6. Look at verses 5 and 6. Look at those words. Now in Shushan, the palace, there was a certain Jew whose name was Mordecai, the son of Jah, the son of Shimei, the son of Kish, a Benjaminite, who ran carried away from Jerusalem with the captivities which had been carried away with Jeconiah, the king of Judah, and Nebuchadnezzar and the king of Babylon had carried away. So he's from the tribe of Benjamin. Somebody says, so what? Well, when they promote this guy called Haman in the kingdom, everybody's bowing to Haman. And Mordecai, well, he know the law. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make any grave name anything that is him that do. So he know better. So he's not going to bow. Just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego make this golden image and Nebuchadnezzar want a few to bow. He says he's not bowing. So when I tell Nebuchadnezzar, he said, if you don't bow it, you're going to burn. He said, no, you have it wrong. If I bow, I'm going to burn. If I bow to that, I'm going to burn in hell. If I don't bow, you'll burn my body, but my spirit will live. So I'm not going to bow to any golden image. And it turned up, he said, seven times, well, turn it up. I'm not going to bow. So Mordecai knew that he's not going to bow to no Haman. So Haman was angry, and he said that he's going to wipe out not just Haman, but all the Jews. Well, if he wipe out all the Jews, and he's from the tribe of Benjamin, but he's going to wipe out a very important person from the tribe of Benjamin, and we need that person in the tribe of Benjamin. Look at this in the book of Philippians. Look at the book of Philippians. Philippians chapter 3. Is Philippians in the Bible? So make sure we need the B-I-B. Look at, look, at look at Philippians. Look at who's from the tribe of Benjamin. Philippians chapter 3. Put your finger in the fifth verse. Put your finger in the fifth verse. Philippians chapter, look at the fifth verse. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, 
uh, Hebrews of Hebrew touching the law of Pharisee. So if they get rid of all the Benjaminites, you'll get rid of the Apostle Paul. Uh, we have no Apostle Paul. Uh, he's from the tribe of Benjamin. So you wipe out that tribe, you'll have no Can you read? Can you read? Look at it. So he interceded, of course, with Esther, and they stopped the slaughter of all the Jews in all the 127 provinces. Here in the United States, they say we have states. Up in Canada, they say provinces. There are 127 of them. And all the Jews struggled. So some way they're going to wipe out all the Benjaminites. Look at, the, look at the Philippians 3 and verse 5. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisee. Go back to the book of Esther. Go to the book of Esther. Chapter 10. Yes, I know. Get rid of all the Benjamin. Well, you have no Apostle Paul. From the book of Romans to the book of Hebrews is the Apostle Paul. Is the Apostle Paul. So we have no Apostle Paul. He really is a synonym for the New Covenant. <laughs> so get rid of all of them. He from the tribe of Benjamin. Esther chapter 10. I'll look at Mordecai because he gets himself in that position. Look at he use this position for the kingdom. Not for himself. The unjust or use it for himself. Huh? The wicked servant didn't do anything, cast me to other doctors. Judas is shared full his pocket with our money, with the Lord's money. Thieves. Esther chapter 10, verse 1. King Ahasuerus laid tribute upon the land and upon the isles of the sea. All the acts of his power and his might at the declaration of the greatness of Mordecai were unto the king advance him. Are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Media and Persia? Look at the third verse. Put your finger on the third verse. Look at the third verse. And Mordecai the Jew was next on to King Ahasuerus. Where do you talk about that? It's just like Nehemiah right next to them. Using the power right next to them. Huh? Look at, look at verse 3. Jew was next on to King Ahasuerus. Great among the Jews and accepted of the multitude and his brethren. Seeking the wealth of his people and speaking peace to all the seed. How you like that? Using his to preserve if he had not intercede and get with Esther to intercede and wipe out all the Jews and wipe out the tribe of Benjamin and we'll have no the apostle Paul. Let's go some more. The book of Jeremiah. Book of Jeremiah chapter 38. Make friends with those folks out there. Make friends with them. We go into eternal life. They go into eternal destruction. Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 38. And let's see, let's see use it, using, a, using that. Remember, if there's a prophet among you, I, God, go make my uh, them in dreams and in vision. You get rid of the prophet. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. Jeremiah chapter 38. Let's pick it up with the sixth verse. Jeremiah chapter 38. Look at the sixth verse. Then they took Jeremiah and cast him into the dungeon of Melchiah, the son of Hamlet that was in the, court, in the courts of the prison and they led down Jeremiah with cords into the dungeon and there was no water but mire so Jeremiah was sunk into the mire now Ebed Melech the Ethiopian one of the eunuch which had which was in the king's house heard that they had put Jeremiah into the dungeon and the king is sitting in the gate of Benjamin now here's a guy who have access to the king how many people could just walk into the king like that you have access to the king he have access I mean, if they leave there too long then he will die so he, have, he paid me, he went direct to the king, doesn't have to get an appointment, just walk direct to the king. Verse 8, Ebed Melech went forth out of the king's house and speak to the king, saying, My lord, the king, these men have done evil in all that they have done to Jeremiah the prophet, whom they had cast into the dungeon. He is likely to die for hunger in this place, for where there is no more bread in the city. And the king commanded Ebed Melech the Ethiopian, saying, Take with thee thirty men with thee, take Jeremiah the prophet out of the dungeon before he die. Now here's the guy with access to the king. He walked right into the king and get access to it. What about you? You have access to certain people in authority. What are you doing to filter that money down into the kingdom of God? Yeah? You remember the encounter we saw with Jesus then? All these kingdoms are mine and whomsoever with, I give it. Paul called him the God of this world. Jesus called him the prince of this world. Huh? Make friends with them and get it, take it from that side and bring it over to this side. Look at it. Look at verse 11. So Ebed Malik took with him the men and went to the house of the kings under the treasury and took their old cast cloths and rotten rags and led down by the cords into the dungeon to Jeremiah. Ebed Malik the Ethiopian said to Jeremiah, Put now these old cast cloths and rotten rags under the armhole of the cords of Jeremiah and did so. So they dropped Jeremiah with cords and took him up out of the dungeon. So Jeremiah remained in the courts 
of the prison. So to take me, you'll die. But here is a person using faith. Think about this every time you chew on this. These folks were not saved. When Adam sinned in the garden, everybody dies spiritually. Nobody's born again yet. But here's a guy concerned about the prophet. What about you? You saved. You operated in three cylinders, spirit, soul, and body. They operated in soul and body. Just like animals. They have no, the spirit was dead. When Adam sinned in the garden, everybody dies spiritually. You have to be born again. And this guy concerned that going to the king to get something done for Jeremiah. What about you? You work in that job, you could filter certain money down to the church. You wouldn't give the church a blow in a balloon. Yes. God, God is watching. God is going to bring all this back to you. The reason why we're reading this thing, God is going to bring it back to you. Some of you out there listening, you could do more than that for the kingdom. Much, much more. You have access to a lot of stuff that you could open up to the kingdom. But you're not doing it. Just selfish. Like the unjust Lord. Like the wicked servant. <laughs> like the one who's stealing the church money. Well, when you don't put it in the church, you're stealing the money. What belongs to God? 10% of the money belongs to God. If you're not giving, you're stealing. Will a man rob God? How did he rob him? Tithes and offering? Bring all the tithes in the stores. I'll open the windows and pour you a blessing. You rob God. You rob God. Can you read? You've got to bring Jeremiah. Look at the book of Daniel. Look at the book of Daniel. Meanwhile, I'm cooking a meeting. Book of Daniel. You see, and, all, and look at these men. They're right next to absolute power. You see, Ibn Malik could go right into the king and get information. He had Joseph working right there with Pharaoh, right next to him. Here, working right next to Ahab over there, was able to protect the prophets and take care of them. Nehemiah, right there, out of Zuxi, right there next to him. Yeah, right next to him, to the king. Daniel chapter 2, and Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. He saw in the dream a vision. He called in the wise men, the sorcerers, and astrologers say, think about the kingdom as massive for that nobody have the answer now if you, you take a little time I, mean, I urge you in your time of prayer to find some quiet time and just chew on that for a while here you have a massive kingdom with millions of people nobody have the answer and the bible said that which was that which is that which shall be done is that which is done and nothing new under the sun same thing they're going to destroy the old world just know his wife is three sons of the tree. Wife survived. Everybody else is. They're going to destroy Southern Memorial. Just Lot and his two daughters survived. Everybody else destroyed. Uh -huh. Elijah the prophet, 450 prophets of Baal, plus Jezebel had another 400. All them in churches of darkness. Jesus said, Broad is the way and wide is the gate that leads to destruction. And many go in the around, but straight is the gate and narrow is the way to lead to only a few find it. And your Bible called a few eight. The Bible call a few eight. That which was, that which is, that which shall be done is that which is done and nothing new under the sun. When we come towards the end time in the book of Revelation, only one book of life. So it's urgent that you who have access to certain things next to certain people with information that could be trackled down to the kingdom, you need to use it. Look at these men. And everybody we look at thus far, wasn't even saved. There wasn't even saved. But it, look into this. To preserve the things of God throughout. Look at Daniel. So he had this dream and he called for all his wise men. Nobody can. He said, Well, nobody could tell him. So he'll kill everybody, including Daniel and his Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And Daniel asked for time and he went into God and asked for time and God revealed to him what he, what he dreamt. Now, with Joseph's dream with Pharaoh, Pharaoh tell him the dream that he saw this seven of this and seven of this and seven of this and seven of that and saw these seven. And Joseph interpret those seven for him and tell him what it means. Seven years of famine and seven years of plenty. But with Nebuchadnezzar, he dreamt he don't remember what he dreamt. He don't remember what he dreamt. And he called his They said, well, tell us what you dream and we'll tell you the interpretation. You say you don't remember. And because he don't remember, he said, he's going to kill all the wise men, the soothsayers, the astrologers, kill everybody, including Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So Daniel asked for time and went to God. And God had to go back into his spiritual archives and tell him what he didn't remember, what he dreamt. And that which was, that which is the same thing today. Very, very few people have this information. Throw the Bible, you see, just one, one, just one Moses, just one Joshua, just one Joseph, just one. So Daniel get the information, God reveal the information, tell him about this image, and it blow his natural mind. So this massive image with the head made out of gold and the chest and arms made out of silver and the belly made out of brass and the legs made out of iron and he explained it to him what this means 
See, Nebuchadnezzar, you the head of gold. You're absolute ruler. Nobody is powerful as you. You like, you, like, you, you like God of the world, so to speak. After you come in another empire with the chest and arms of silver, which is the Persian Empire. After that come a belly of brass, which is the Greek Empire, headed by Alexander the Great. Then after come the Roman Empire by the Caesars and so on. And when he hear that, I mean, he's just blown away to know that this young man have this information. He said, there's no God could do things like that, but you're God. And look what you're going to do here in Daniel chapter 2. <clears throat> and given the information now, look at how you're going to respond. Look at Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar responding to Daniel. Was it a dream? Nebuchadnezzar. Daniel chapter 2. And let's pick up at verse 46. He gave him the dream and give him the interpretation and so on. But Daniel chapter 2, let's pick up at the 46 verse. Then King Nebuchadnezzar fell on his face and worshipped Daniel and commanded that they should offer an oblation and sweet order unto him. So he make that, he, he exalt Daniel like he's a god. And then the king answered unto Daniel and said, Of a truth, thy God is, is a God of gods and the Lord of kings and the revealer of secrets, seeing that thou reveal the secret. And king made Daniel a great man and gave him many gifts and made him ruler over the province of Babylon and the chief of the governors over all the wise men of the Babylon. Look at verse 49. Look at verse 49. Says he used his position to bring his brethren there. Because in that kingdom is mostly darkness. There's very few light. Look at verse 49. Then Daniel requested the king that he should shut Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the affairs of the province of Babylon. And Daniel sat in the gate of the king. So put them in position that they can do things to enhance our kingdom. He requested that they put look at it. Look at verse 49. Daniel requested the king that he should that he should set Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the affairs of the prophets. So put them in big position. Governors and sheriffs and mayors and put them in position. He requested that. And he stood right next to the king. What about you? Sitting next to the king, wherever you're working, that bank manager, that Wall Street or that mayor, or that borough president, or whoever it is sitting next to them and not doing that and just sitting there. You just like we look, we started by looking at these three people. We look at the unprofitable servant. He gave him and he didn't do nothing with it. He said, you are, you are wicked and slow to cast him into the air of darkness. So you sitting there and you have things that you can do and you're not doing it. Then you look at the, un, the unjust Todd. <laughs> he enriched himself. He using it using for him. Then you look at Judas Iscariot. He's stealing. These three. Which is the worst? Look at Matthew. Let's come a little closer to home. Matthew chapter 27. Get something to write with and something to write on. Hear what God is saying to us in his holy, written, precious word. Looking at all these men right next to absolute power. And they use it. They use it for the kingdom. Matthew chapter 27. And let's speak about verse 57. Look at Joseph of our Matthew 27. Look at verse 57. When the evening was come, there came a rich man of Amartya named Joseph, who was himself, was Jesus' disciple. So he was a believer, a follower of Jesus then. He had a promissory note on salvation. Look at it. Look at the 57 verse again. When evening was come, a rich man of Amartya named Joseph, who himself was Jesus' disciple, he went to Pilate. Well, Pilate is the governor. Pilate is the governor. I said, Pilate is the governor. So, I mean, he, he, he just went to Pilate. You remember? When they put Jesus on the cross was midday. It was the sixth hour. And he stayed on the cross from the sixth hour to the ninth hour. Now they have to take Jesus down at the, the ninth hour and he have to be buried before six o'clock. Huh? Before the twelfth hour. He had to be buried before to comply with Jewish law. So this guy have access. He could just walk right in. And Pilate, Pilate Palace is not right next to the cemetery. So he could just leave where he at, go walk right into Pilate, Ask the body, Pilate, give it him, take the body, and bury it in his own new stone. He have access to take down our Lord and Savior and make sure he bur proper burial for him and Nicodemus prepare the body for burial. Look at it, verse 57. When evening was come, the rich man of Ramatia, what are you doing with your rich? Filling your pockets. Joseph himself was, he went to Pilate and begged the body of Jesus. Then Pilate commanded the body to be delivered. And when Joseph had taken the body, he wrapped it in a clean linen cloth, clean linen cloth, all that, look at it, and laid it in his own new tomb, his own new tomb. Lay there. He went to Pilate and get only lay in the tomb, which had hewn out of the rocks, and rolled a great stone door on the sepulchre, and he departed. 
So he right next to Pilatus, walk right and give me this body. Give me this body so there'll be no fowls in the air could come and beast and we come and start eating away this body. We want to preserve this body because he's going to spend three days and three nights after he satisfied divine justice, defeat principality and power. He's going back into that body. We want to make sure that body is not, doesn't decay. Like Lazarus won't start decaying after four years. Can you see that? Amen, amen, and amen. Look at this in the book of Luke. There's Luke in the Bible. Just want to make sure we're in the B-I-B. L-E. Look at this. Look at Luke. And look at this transfer of wealth from dark to light. Luke chapter 19. Use it for the kingdom. Luke chapter 19. Pick it about verse 1. Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publican, and he was rich. Underline, he was rich. And he saw to teach Jesus who he was, but could not but oppress because he was a little statue. He ran before him and climbed into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and he saw him, and he said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for this day I must abide in thy house. And he made haste and he came down and received him joyfully. When they saw it, they all murmured, saying that this man to be a guest with a man that is a sinner. So two things we saw there, rich, sinner. Rich, sinner. That he's rich, sinner. What, what do sinners do? Look at the 8th verse. Zacchaeus stood up and said unto him, Lord, half my goods I give to the poor. If I take anything by false accusation, I restore for well, everything he got, he got by false accusation. Because when they went to John the Baptist to be baptized, the, Republican, the Republicans asked, what should they do? He said, take, don't take more than is required of you. If 10% taxes you need to take, or 15%, just take what is required. But it was taken 30 and 40%. That's how they get rich. That's how they get rich. They so say, if I take anything by force, I, I return fourfold. So every dollar I take, I return four on it. He's a rich guy. But look at that money transfer from darkness to light. And you know what Jesus didn't say, I don't want it? Because, listen, Zacchaeus, all this money you get by wheeling and dealing and drug dealing and money laundering and drug running and whatever you do with this money, I don't want this money. Jesus took it. Jesus took it. Huh? Look at it. Zacchaeus stood up and said unto him, For half my goods I give to the poor, if I take anything by false accusation, I restore fourfold. Jesus said, to This day salvation has come to thy house, for as much as also thou art the son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost. He's taking all that money for the gospel. Well, to send people out, they're going to need money. You call Peter, James, and John from the job to come. They were fishers. They were businessmen. They lived. Somebody said, why, did, why would somebody do something so dumb and so we leave your business to go behind Jesus to work for nothing? No, they're working for a lot of money. He said, any man who leave land and house and father and mother and lands and business for my sake, I'll give them a hundredfold. So whatever they was making, they give them a hundred times more. That's why they leave fought with. They didn't discuss it with their wife and trying to do what have a debate about it. They didn't, no. They only called him and left fought with. He made them an offer. I'll give you a hundredfold. Somebody say, you have that in the Bible? I got it in the Bible for you. Keep your marker. They'll be coming right back. Look at Mark chapter 10. Look at Mark chapter, M-E-R-K is Mark. Look at Mark chapter 10. That's why they leave fought with. These are businessmen. Somebody say, well, you know, Jesus was full of the Holy Ghost. Well, if he was full of the Holy Ghost, they wasn't full. They wasn't saved. Nobody wasn't saved until after Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. So nobody was saved yet. Natural man received not the things of the Spirit of God. So you can say, well, they put the Spirit of God upon. If he can do that and get them to come, he could do that with the entire world and get them to come. Go out throughout Asia, throughout Africa, throughout Europe, throughout the Americas. Throughout the, just swing your hand, get everybody saved, and let us go into the millennium. But that's not the way it worked. That's not the way it worked. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes and baptized shall be saved. He that believes not shall be damned. Some people are going to receive it. Some are going to receive it. So if he can just snap his finger and get Peter, James, and John, and Andrew just to come right away, he should ought to do that in Africa and Asia and Europe and throughout the Americas. Go to Washington first. They need to snap your finger there first. Uh -huh. Mark chapter 10. And look what he said here. Mark chapter 10. We're going back to Luke 19. We're going back over there in a few. Luke, Mark chapter 10, look at verse 28. Then Peter began to send him, Lord, we have left all to follow thee. Jesus answered and said, Verily, that word verily means truly, or I swear to tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth shall help me, Lord. Verily I say unto you, there is no man who have left house, 
or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my sake and for the gospel, for my sake and for the gospel, for my sake and for the gospel, but you shall receive a hundredfold now in this time. You see, that's why a hundredfold. So if you're making a million dollars, I'll give you a hundred million dollars. You shall receive a hundredfold now in this time, houses, brethren, sisters, mothers, children, lands, with persecution, and the world to come eternal life. Many that are first shall be last, and last shall be first. So that's where they get it from. Uh, let's go back over there to Luke chapter 19. Get something to write when something to write on. Look at, look at Zacchaeus transfer all that over. From the kingdom of darkness, he came of light. Son of man came to seek and to save that which was lost. Well, to seek and to save that which was lost, go call money. Salvation is free. But the pipeline costs money. To get it on television, radio, to go into Africa, to go into Asia, when you get there, you have to be fed, you stay there for a while, you have to have Bibles and tracts and people to work and stay in hotels or motor, wherever you're going to be staying, it costs money. Salvation is free, but the pipeline costs money. Huh? Look at it. Let's go, let's go up the top and read it all over again. Look at it. Rich, notice two things, rich, sinner. Well, sinner will sin as a dog, will go bow wow, as a cat will go meow, as a cow will go moo. That's what the sinners do. Luke chapter 19, pick it up at verse 1 again. Jesus entered and passed through Jericho, and behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the rich, which was chief, chief among the publican, his supervisor, the publican, and he was rich. <laughs> yeah, he was rich. He'd taken money more than he should be taken. He saw to Jesus who he was, and he could not for the press because he was of little stature. He ran before him and came into a sycamore tree to see he was to pass that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and he saw him, and he said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for this day must I abide in thy house. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. When they saw it, they said all murmur and saying that this man going to be a guest with a man that is a sinner. Zacchaeus stood up and said unto the Lord, Behold, half my goods I give to the poor if I take anything by false accusation I return fourfold. Jesus said unto him, This day salvation come to thy house, for also thou is the son of Abraham. For the son of man came to seek and to save that which was lost. So he take transfer all that money over on our side from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light so we can preach the gospel so then Jesus could make that offer to them whatever you're making you're going to get a hundredfold all those people pouring all that money to the kingdom can you see that amen amen and amen let us go look at the book of Proverbs the book of Proverbs chapter 13 get something to write with and something to write on here what God is saying to us in his holy written precious words Proverbs chapter 13 and let's look at one verse look at the 22nd verse Proverbs chapter 13 look at the 27th verse look at Zacchaeus money transfer from one side to the next Proverbs chapter 13 look at the 22nd verse a good man leaveth an inheritance to his children children but the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just we just see Jacchaeus is a sinner <laughs> and he was rich. So his wealth is left for us. Can you see that? A good man leaveth an inheritance to his children, children, but the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. Can you read the book of Ecclesiastes? Ecclesiastes chapter 2. Got something to write with and something to write on while I'm cooking a meeting. Ecclesiastes chapter 2. And see what God is saying to us. Use that to make friends of those folks on that side. Imagine if Jesus had a hostile relationship with Zacchaeus. He would never turn that money over. No, he let him bring it and turn it over to our side. Turn it over to our side. Turn it over to our side. There's nothing wrong with your money. It's what it's used for. Look at it. Ecclesiastes chapter 2. Look at the 26th verse. Ecclesiastes chapter 2. Look at the 26th verse. God give it to a man that is good in his sight, wisdom and knowledge and joy. But to the sinner he give it travail to gather and heaped up that he may give it unto him that is good before God. This also is vanity and vexation of spirit. Can you read? How read is thou? I say how read is thou? <laughs> Zacchaeus where they all the tricks and scheme all he do to pull out all that money from those folks taking more money he should be taking pass it over to us. Wealth of the wicked is left for the sinner. Look at it. Look at that verse again. Look at the 26 verse. Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 26. God give it to a man that is good in his sight, wisdom and knowledge and joy. 
But to the sinner, he giveth travail, that he gathereth heaped up, we give it to him that is good before God. This also is vanity and vexation of spirit. Let's try to close up this segment with this. Big John chapter 17. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Big John chapter 17. Jesus getting ready to leave. He closing out his earthly ministry. And he made a statement here that you have to keep this before you. I have already the edition, the head of the church is speaking, and the apostle John is recording. Big John chapter 17, pick it up with the 14 verse. Big John chapter 17, pick it up with the 14 verse. I have given them thy word, and the world hated them, because they are not of this world, even as I am not of this world. I pray that thou should take them, not that thou should take them out of the world, but thou should keep them from evil. They are not of this world even as I am not of this world. We are not of this world. We here, we come here to do our job to get people saved. The whole world is in darkness. Look at the 17th verse. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. We are not of this world. We are in this world, but not of this world. Uh, don't try to do it the way the world do it. Gather up all that wealth for themselves. Heaped up treasures for the last days. See them just gathering all this wealth up. So they mind building bigger bands. So you can have money, mom, that own natural own desire for wealth, but that doesn't have eternal value. This we can use it for eternal value. The unjust thought use it to enrich himself. But he's gonna die in the process of time. But you could use it for eternal, everlasting habitation. Can you see that? Amen, amen. Part two. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Luke chapter 16, the faithful servant. Luke chapter 16, and let's see what God is saying to us. Luke chapter 16, I have a red late edition. The head of the church is speaking, and the apostle Luke is recording. Luke chapter 16. And look at this reading here. Luke chapter 16. <clears throat> and look at the, let's pick up the 10th verse. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in that which is much. He that is unjust in least, is also unjust as much. So God is not going to entrust big things to you if you're not faithful. If you're faithful with small things, you're going to be faithful with big things. If you're unjust with small things, you're going to be unjust with big things. You see, that's you. Look at verse 11. If therefore you have not been faithful in unrighteous mammon who will commit to you the true the true riches if you have not been faithful in that which is another man's who will give to you that which is your own no servant can serve two masters for either he'll hate one and love the other or else he'll hold to one and despise the other you cannot serve God and mammon whose side you on what are your motives are you thinking about eternal life or just thinking about yourself if you're faithful in little things, God's going to give you big things. If you're not faithful in small things, he's not going to give it to you. You have a bad resume. That guy that on just thought, he have to present some kind of resume. He have to lie. Because within him is to be unjust. If a man trusted with everything, distort, he give everything. You hire, you fire, you set salary, tell when people to get a vacation, and sick leave, and maternity leave, and you, you, you run the show. And for him to entrust everything for you, and you're not faithful, that's with it. That's with it. White is sepulchre. Outside you look like, but inside are ravening wolves. Look at these verses again. Go back to verse 10. He that is faithful in that which is least is also faithful in that which is much. He that is unjust in least is also unjust in much. Look at the 19th. Luke chapter 19. <clears throat> Luke chapter 19. And let's pick it up with the 15 verse. Now he, he gave all the talent to all those. But look at those faithful. One is not faithful. But look at these two, they're faithful with what God gave them. What God give you, are you faithful with it? Using that voice to sing for the kingdom, or to write for the kingdom, or to be a good usher for the kingdom, or to be a sword of what God bless you with for the kingdom. We look at all those people in the last seven, it's right next to the king, and they use it. To, the, to benefit the kingdom. What about you? Were you sitting on that job? You can do better. 
you can do more. Look at this, the faithful servant. Luke chapter 19, let's pick up about the 15 verse. Luke chapter 19, let's pick up about the 15 verse. And see what God is saying to us in his holy, written, precious words. Luke chapter 9, look at the 15 verse. And it came to pass that when he was returned, having received the kingdom, then he commanded those servant call whom he had given the money, that he might know how much every man is drained by trading. Then came the person saying to him, Lord, thy pong has gained 10 pounds. Man, he, I mean, you're talking about work because to invest money to draw by trading, buying and selling, I mean you take some risk. And you go out there, demand money, and you invest, you give you one, you get 10 with it. Look at it. Look at verse 17. He said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Because thou was, look at, thou good and, look at, he said unto him, Well done, thou, thy good servant, because thou was being faithful in little, I'll make the authority over many. And the second also came to him, saying, Lord, thy pong has gained five pounds. I said, Because you've been faithful in that, I'll give you more. But see, if you're not faithful, he's not going to give you any more. Why should he give you any more? The other one who did nothing, he take it away from him. He say, wicked and slothful servant, you didn't do anything with that. At least you put it in the bank. But because they were, look at, because you, you give you little, and you was faithful, it little, it'll give you more. Look at, look, 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 go back to verse 15. And came to pass when he was returned, having received the kingdom, then he commanded those servants to be called on whom he had given the money that he might know how much every man gained by trading. Then came the person and said to him, Lord, I pound again 10 pounds. You talk about bless. Well, you talk about that in the gospel according to John, big John chapter 15. Any branch in me that is not producing fruits, I cut it down. Any branch in me that is producing fruits, I purge it that it bring forth much fruit. So shall you be my disciple. He's not just satisfied if he wants much fruit. Well, I mean, this is good return. Give you one, you get ten. Oh, look at it. Came the first saying unto him, Lord, I pong has gained ten pounds. He said unto him, Well, thou good servant, because thou hast been faithful in very little, thou has authority over ten cities. It's because you little, I'll give you more. The other one, the other one, and then the second came unto him, saying, Thy pong has gained five pounds. He said, And likewise to him, I'll also over five cities. The other one who didn't get anything, take it away from him. But they are the faithful servant. Now look at something here. Let's come a little closer to home and let's turn the corner a bit. Acts chapter 6. Let's turn the corner a bit. Let's come a little closer to home. Acts chapter 6. And look at because people were faithful with little things, God moved them up. And it's the same thing in your ministry, in your business. Why would he give you more for you to be all more unfaithful, to be more destructive? If you're faithful with little, then I'll give you more. He just give you one, he get ten. Because he was faithful with little, I'll give you more. Look at this. Look at Acts chapter 6. Let me turn in the corner a bit here. Acts chapter 6, pick it up at verse 1. And in those days when the number of disciples were multiplied, there arose murmur of the Grecian against the Hebrews because the widows was neglecting the daily ministration. Then the twelve called the multitude of disciples, the multitude of disciples, the multitude of disciples unto them, said unto them, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Wherefore, brethren, look you among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we appoint over this business. We will give ourselves continue to the prayer and to the ministry of the word. And they said, Please, the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith, and the Holy Ghost, and Philip, and Prochorus, and Nicodemus, and Timon, and Pyminus, Nicholas, the proselyte of Antioch. When they set them before the apostles, they prayed and they laid their hands on them. And the word of God increased, and the number of disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly, and a great company of priests were obedient to the faith. So they called these people, one of the people they called there is Philip. People they called there is Philip. Now he come, a disciple, get you seven disciples, somebody who have good report, full of the Holy Ghost, and wisdom. Now he's just a disciple, a believer. Look at something else. Look at Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. Now a disciple. Now God is not going to promote you. If you, know, you can't use what you have, you say, I give you one, you get ten. He said, well done. Now good and faithful servant, I'll give you more. Now look at that. Look at um, Acts chapter 8. Look at verse 5. Philip went on to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people of one accord gave heed unto him with Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. 
on clean spirit, crying with loud voice, came out of men that were possessed with them, and men that were taken with palsy, and were lame were healed, and there was great joy in the city. But notice he started as a disciple, and they put him as a deacon to help out around the church at whatever they have need of. Look at Acts chapter 21. If you're not faithful, God wouldn't give you anything more. That's why you never promote some people because you're not faithful. You don't come to church regularly. You don't come to Bible study. You don't come to primary. Why should he promote you? If he give you a church, that's the same way you're going to be. If you're not faithful, little things, he's not going to give you a big thing. But you see, I was faithful. A man loaned me an abandoned house in Elton Street because I was faithful to that house. I cleaned it up and we fixed that house and we put value to that house. And he looked at him and said, look at him. It's a borrowed house. Don't have a lease in the house. Don't have no claim to the house. But look at it. Well, he moved me to Blake One. So I have two houses. And I was faithful in another house. He moved me to the third house, Blake Two. And I was faithful there. He moved me to South Avenue, four houses. Then I moved to Riverdale, five houses. Then to St. Mark, six houses. Because you're faithful little. Here's an abandoned building, missing, needed window, needed roof, needed boiler to fix. Everything needed to be fixed. But because you was faithful in that abandoned building, he give you more. You see, Luke, he signed up as a disciple. And they make him a deacon. Now he's preaching the gospel again, people saved. But look at this here in Acts 21, verse 8. The next day they were Paul company departed and came into Caesarea and entered the house of Philip the Evangelist, which was one of the seven on board with him. So from a, a believer, he got promoted to a deacon, from a deacon to evangelist. If it was miserable and disgusting, we promote him to another. He said, a believer, look out, seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom whom he appointed this. So he was good in his job as a deacon and they promote him to evangelist. Here he going on to Samaria. What an honor to go into Samaria. He's the first one to go into Samaria to preach the gospel to Samaria. Look at that. But because he's faithful. Why didn't they send somebody else? Because he was faithful. Because he's faithful. If you're not faithful, God is not going to give you. He give him one, he come up with ten. He said, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Because you've been faithful little, I'll give you more. I'll give you more. The faithful servant. Look at the next one. Look at Acts chapter 4. Get something to write when somebody write. God is not going to promote you. You're not a good church attendant. You're not good with your money. You're not good with the things of God. He's not going to promote you. You're going to promote yourself. And then you're going to fall flat in your face because God didn't promote you. I like this consistently for years from January to December. He looked around him and said, look at my son. He here every time. Cold, hot, winter, rain, no rain, flood of rain, hot, cold. I'm here. I'm here. Can't count on you, don't come, something wrong with you, always something, Mickey Mouse, that excuse of something. You always, I'm here all the time. I'm here all the time. God protect my health from January this, I'm here all the time. Yeah. God ain't gonna promote you. Look at him. Look for seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom. He was faithful as a deacon, they promote him to evangelists. Look at this other one. Luke, Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4. And let's pick it about verse 34. Acts chapter 4. Look at verse 34. Neither was there among them any that lacked, for as many possessors of land or houses sold them and bought the price of the things that were sold and laid them down at the apostles' feet. Distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. And Joseph, who by the apostles surnamed Barnabas, which was being interpreted son of consolation, a Levite from the country of Cyprus, having land sold it, and bought the money and laid down at the apostles' feet. Well, here is a person selling his land and giving it to the things of God. God is looking out from heaven. Any man who have left land and house and wife and husband for my name, so say, I'll give a hundredfold. Remember we read a while ago in Mark 10? Any man who gives, so he give it to the things of God. Give that. That's Mr. Barnabas. Look at something with him. Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9. The apostle Paul received Jesus in Damascus Road. And nobody believed this, this Paul was for real. But look at the part that Barnabas played. Acts chapter 9. Pick it about verse 25. Acts chapter 9. Notice, look at, look at this reading here. Look at this reading. God is not, you're not faithful. If you're faithful in least, you're going to be faithful in much. If you're not faithful in least, if you're unfaithful in little, you'll be unfaithful in just. They give you a big, you'll just be just disgusting. When he was small and unreliable, you'll be the same way. Look at this. Acts chapter 9, look at verse 25. Then the disciples, underline disciples, notice he's not a ministry giver, anything, just a disciple. 
just a disciple, a disciple. Then the disciples took, took, took him by night and let him down in a wall in a basket. And when, when, was, and when Saul was come to Jerusalem, he said to join himself to the, to the disciples, the disciple. But they were all afraid of him, believed not that he was a disciple. But Barnabas took him and brought him unto the apostles and declared them how that he had seen the Lord in the way and he had spoken of him and how he had preached boldly in the mask of the name of the Lord. And he was with them and coming out, going among them, and goes 29, and he speak boldly in the name of Lord Jesus, the disciples, and disputed against the Grecians, and they went about to slay him and so on. And Paul and the brethren and him, they knew him, and they brought him down to Caesarea and sent him on to Tarsus, Saul of Tarsus. But notice the part that Barnabas played. He take all his land, he sold it, he give it to the apostles. Now here, Apostle Paul, nobody wanted to build. He is the one taking when he introduced him to the apostles. So he was a sort of mentor for the Apostle Paul. Look at the part that he played. And let him down in a basket. And he was their disciple. Let's go some more with this Barnabas. Barnabas, look at Acts chapter 13. Now notice he says as a disciple, taking all his money given to the apostle. Uh, sold land and give it to them. Look at Acts chapter 13. If you faithfully little things, God's going to bless you with big things. That's why he blesses the way he does. God, I'm faithful. You know, if you put a million dollars in my hand, he knows exactly what they're going to do with it. If you put a hundred million, he knows exactly what they're going to do with it. If he can't trust you with a hundred thousand dollars and you've gone crazy with a hundred thousand, he ain't gonna give you any more. You'll kill yourself and kill other people. Oh, you know, you have to be, you have to try. God have to know if you're faithful with little things. But that abandoned building Elton Street, he said, I was faithful. I was there every day cleaning it. Made, we, we put life, we put value on life to that building. You see, other, other man building, we had no lease and we had no agreement with it. We had no, nothing in writing for it. We just, but God bless, God looked up from heaven. He protected us and built from that. Look at here in Acts chapter 13. And verse 1. Now there was a Jew to Antioch, certain prophet and teachers, certain prophet and teachers, certain prophet and teachers, certain prophet and teachers. Notice as a disciple, you work with the Apostle Paul, introduce me to the brethren of Jerusalem. Look at here. Now there was in the church at Antioch, certain prophet and teachers, such as Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manian, who had brought up in Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. As the minister of the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost says, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work we are to have called them. When they had fasted and prayed, they laid their hands on them and sent them away. So they've been sent for by the Holy Ghost, departed the solution, and from thence they sailed to Cyprus. So here, Barnabas is either a prophet or teacher. At the church of Antioch, prophet or teacher. But notice that his disciple, you say he's giving all his money to the church, sold land, take the money, give it to them. Working with the apostles and those up at Jerusalem, he well known to them because he's the one take the apostle Paul and Jerusalem, Peter and John and James and all them because they didn't believe this apostle Paul was for real. I take him to Tarsus, then he went and look him and bring him back with him, and he had him with Paul. And the early party ministry was only Barnabas and Saul. Barnabas and Saul. Barnabas and Saul. Afterwards, that turned around. Saul and Barnabas. Saul and Barnabas. Well, look at here in the church. Look at verse 13, verse 1. Now there was the church at Antioch, certain prophet and teachers such that Barnabas. And Simeon was called Niger, Lucius of Simon, Manion, brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. As the minister of the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, So he was either the Barnabas or either prophet or teacher. Can you see that? Look at Acts chapter 14. Acts chapter 14. And see what God is saying to us in his holy, written, precious word. No, no, we saw him as a disciple, bring all his stuff and give it there. We saw him with the Apostle Paul. In here in Antioch, he was either a prophet or a teacher. Look at Acts chapter 14. Acts chapter 14. Put your finger on the, on the 14 verse. Put your finger on the 14 verse. Which when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard that they ran their clothes and ran among the people crowd and so on. So now he's an apostle. He started as a, as a disciple. Taking his mind, giving it to the church. Ah. Uh, and we saw him as either a prophet or teacher in Antioch. And now we see him here as an apostle. Huh? How read this down? You see, if you're faithful with little things, God's going to bless you with big things. If you're not faithful with little things, he's not going to bless you. I'm a prime example of that. I'm a prime example of that. Abandoned house, I mean faithful. Keep that house like if it was my house. Good care of it. They come to visit, there's nothing they can say. They could eat off the floor. Well, because you see, faithful there, move me to Blake once, so I have two houses. Then I moved to Blake to have three houses. To South Avenue, four houses. To Riverdale, five houses. St. Mark, six houses. You see, because you're faithful. You're not faithful that they keep it dirty and stink. You don't pay the bills and, just keep, and the people come to visit. They're just treated. No, no, no. 
they come to visit, they could say nothing. Nothing they could say about. They could eat off the floor. I mean, they had, we put value to that house. See? But look at them now. Look at them now. Look at verse 14. Which when the apostles Barnabas, the Barnabas is now apostle. God had said some in the church, first apostle, secondary prophet, third is the highest ministry gift. But look how we started out. We saw him there, son of consolation, sold the land and give it to them. We saw him working there with the apostle Paul. Then we see him at Antioch, prophet or teacher. Now we see him on an apostle. How read this out? I say, how read this out? Look at the apostle Paul. Look at the apostle Paul. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 9, and look at the Apostle Paul. And see what God is saying to us in his holy, written, precious words. Why God don't promise it? Because you're not faithful. If you're faithful in little, you'll be faithful in much. If you're unjust with little, you'll be unjust. Yeah. If you're not faithful other people's stuff, God ain't going to trust you. That was somebody else's house. That's not what that belonged to a church. And you treated very, you didn't value it. No respect for the people's property? No. So because I had respect, he gave me my own. Yeah, you treat the people, other people's stuff. If you're not faithful to other people's stuff, you're not going to be faithful to yours either. You see, God looked around heaven. You see, all these are principles. Get these things. Somebody give it to work. Work. I never was fired from a job. Lazy and playing games. And oh, no, I work harder than everybody else. Nobody's going to find me. If the job closing down, fine. No, I can't say. You as a Christian, you should work harder than everybody else. Look at this. Acts chapter 9. Look at the Apostle Paul. Acts chapter 9. Pick it about verse 1. The Apostle Paul. Acts chapter 9. Pick it about verse 1. And Saul yet beat on threatening against the threatening and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord went to the high priest and desires him letters to Damascus to sing if you shall find only this way whether there were men or women you will bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And his journey came near to Damascus suddenly shine round about with light from heaven and he fell to the earth, heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why prosecutest thou me? He said, Who art thou, Lord? The Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou prosecutest hard for thee to kick against the prick. He trembled in the sun and said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? The Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the city, I shall tell thee what thou must do. And the men that journeyed to him stood speechless, hearing a voice and seeing no man. Saul arose from the earth, when his eyes were open, he saw no man, and led him by the hand and brought him unto Damascus. And he was there three days without sight, neither did he eat nor drink. There was a certain disciple, certain disciple, certain disciple, certain disciple of Damascus, named Ananias, to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias, he said, Behold, I'm here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the street, which is called straight, and cry the house of one Judas for one Saul of Tarsus, behold, he prayed. But he had seen a vision, a man named Ananias come and put in his hand that may receive his sight. And his answer and said, Lord, I've heard of this man, how much evil he had done to thy saints of Jerusalem, and here you have authority from the chief priests to find all that call their name. The Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel to bear my name before the Gentiles and the king and the children of Israel. I show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. Put your finger on the 17th verse. Put your finger on the 17th verse. Now, one minute in the kingdom of darkness, I mean 100%, 150% working for the kingdom of darkness. Look at the 17th verse. And he went his way and entered the house, put his hands upon him, and said, Brother Saul. So he's a brother. So he's a brother. I say, Saul is a brother. Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus appeared in there. Thou came and sent me that thou might receive thy son, be full of the Holy Ghost. And immediately he fell from his eyes as being scales, and he received forthwith and rose and was baptized and so on. But he's a brother. So Paul signed up as a brother, just a regular brother. Received Christ as Lord as a brother. Can you see that? Paul was a brother. Look at Acts chapter 13. As a brother working along with Barnabas, him and Barnabas working together. Acts chapter 13. <clears throat> Acts chapter 13. Yeah, he said, oh, just as a brother. Now look at it. You see, if you're faithful being a brother, he'll move you up to something else. A faithful a brother. Acts chapter 13, verse 1. Now there was in the church at Antioch certain prophets and teachers, such as Barnabas and Simeon, who was called Niger, and Lucius of Cyrene, named him, who brought up at Herod, Tetrarch, and Saul. So he was either a prophet or teacher in Antioch. But we see him just side of as a brother. If you're not faithful to the brother, why would he move you up to be a prophet or teacher? Acts chapter 14. You see, he signed up for the brother. Now he's a prophet or teacher. Acts chapter 14. Look at the 14 verse. Look at the 14 verse. When the apostles Barnabas and Paul saw from a brother, he was either a prophet or a teacher, and now he's an apostle. But if you're not faithful being a brother, 
<laughs> he wouldn't be a prophet or teacher. Certainly not going to be an apostle. The highest ministry gift. Can you see that? Look at Paul said something here in Timothy. First Timothy chapter 2. First Timothy chapter 2. And Paul said something here. First Timothy chapter 2. First Timothy chapter 2. Put your finger on the seventh verse. Look what he said here. Now we know if we brother Saul, then we saw him either a prophet or teacher. Then we saw him as an apostle. If you're not faithful with low ministry, you're not going to move you up to nothing. You're not going to move you. You're not faithful. You don't come to church often. You don't pay your tithes. You don't have a bad attitude. You don't study your Bible. You're just a bad. Why would you promote you to advertise devilish behavior? He would not promote you. No. I wouldn't either. First Timothy chapter, look at the seventh verse. When to I am ordained a preacher and an apostle, I speak the truth in Christ and I lie not, and a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity. So he had three ministry gifts operating. Jesus operated in the fivefold ministry as an apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. He operated in three of them. When I ordained a preacher, that's an evangelist, and an apostle, I speak the truth in them, I lie not, and a teacher. So when he was in Antioch, he was a teacher. He had prophet and teacher, so he wasn't a prophet, he was a teacher when he was in Antioch. In the church at Antioch, there was prophet and teacher, so when he was in Antioch, he was a teacher. So we saw him as a brother, so I'm as a teacher. So I mean, given this gift, he had a preacher as an evangelist and an apostle. Look at that for seven verse. We went to a preacher, evangelist, and an apostle. Highest ministry gift. God has said them first in the church, first apostle, secondary prophet, thirdly teacher. And fourth is the evangelist, then the pastor. So he had the number one ministry gift, and then he had the teacher, which is third, and the evangelist, which is fourth, and so on. He wasn't a prophet. We are to ordain a preacher and a prop apostle. I speak the truth in Christ, I lie not, and a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity. So we see where Paul was. Let's go to the book of Genesis and see something. Hallelujah. Genesis and look at Joseph. Genesis chapter 39. Got something to write with and something to write on. Hear what God saying to us is holy, written, precious word. You see, God, God is not going to promote if you're not faithful. If you're not faithful with another man's stuff, you're not going to be faithful with yours either. If you're unjust with little, you're going to be just with much. But if you're just with Little, you're going to be just with much. If you're unjust with little, you're going to be unjust with much. If you're not good at a man's stuff, you're going to be good with yours. Take good care of it. Take good care of other people's stuff. Look at it. Look at Joseph in Potiphar's house. Now remember, Joseph came to represent the kingdom of light. Potiphar is from the kingdom of darkness. But look at him working in Potiphar's house. Genesis chapter 39. And let's pick it up at verse 1. Genesis chapter 39. Let's pick it up at verse 1. See what God is saying to us in his holy, written, precious word. Genesis chapter 39. Pick it up at verse 1. And Joseph was brought down to Egypt with Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, brought him of the hands of the Ishmaelite, and was brought, he was brought down thither. And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And the master saw that the Lord was with him, and the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. I mean, how this ungodly man could look at Joseph and see that. But notice, you're working the man's house, an ungodly man, but he's faithful at that job. You see, if you're not faithful here, God is not going to give you anything else. Joseph found grace. Look at that verse 4. Joseph found grace in his sight, and he served him and made him overseer over all his house, and all that he had, he put it into his hand. And it came to pass at that time that he made him overseer. Well, he's not going to make you overseer. If you're not faithful in stealing and just being a disgusting, he ain't going to make you overseer. Because you was faithful in that, then he promoted you to overseer. Put you in charge of everything. You see, because you're faithful in little things, he's going to promote you. But if you're stealing and you're not a lazy person, you're not coming to work and doing what, why would he promote you? you? Don't come to the Bible, say, you don't read your Bible, you're a bad attitude, you're not growing spiritually. Why would he promote you for what? But they'll promote you to do what? But look at him in this ungodly man house. Look at his behavior. Go back up to the top. Joseph was brought down to Egypt and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him of the hands of the Ishmaelite when he was brought down thither. And the Lord was with Joseph and he was a prosperous man. He was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper. 
and Joseph was found grace in his sight. And Joseph found grace and served him and made him overseer over all his house. And he put all he had in his hand. Trust everything in his hand. A store of everything. Put everything in Joseph's hand. Well, if Joseph was not a good person, if he wasn't a hardworking person, why would he promote him? Now, this is our godly man stuff. This is not a Christian stuff. This is our godly man stuff. But if he put him there, look at verse 5. And it came to pass at that time that he made him overseer of all his house. Everything. All his house. All his house and over all that he had, the Lord blessed the Egyptian house for Joseph's sake, and the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in his house in the field. And he left not all that he had in Joseph's hand, and he knew not what he had, all that he had, served the bread that he did eat, and Joseph was a goodly person of well faith. So as he promoted him, he was a good person, he put him there, then he put him over everything, handled everything. But if he wasn't faithful, then why would he give him more? And when he but if I make a pass to me, say, no, I can't do this before my God Almighty and before my boss. I'm not going to do it. You do what you're good with. Peace life you want, but I'm not going to do it. First, he put his God, Almighty God, who prospered him. He said, I'm not going to do it. I tell Potty I'm not going to do it either. And tell a lie on him, well, so be it. It's like Shadrach, Meshach, Medico said, we turn up the burn, turn up the heat, down, turn it up. I'm not going to bow to any image. She keep pulling at me. A young man like that, some, this God going to bring up this for some of you. Joseph left home when he was 17 years old. He was probably about 20 years when he reached to this point now. Because when he started running all of Egypt, was 30 years. So from the time he left home until he started running Egypt, was about 13 years in between there. So that young man, prime of his life. Where did he get those morals from? Where did he get those morals from? Potiphar, wife, Potiphar, so work he's in the house. He, could, he put him in charge of everything. He said, your husband keep nothing from me, he save you. And you full of something and you're just couldn't hold yourself. I couldn't help myself, I know. One day go beside, if you, if you make it to heaven, you're going before the judgment seat of Christ. If you don't make it to heaven, you're going before the great white throne, from there going to the lake. He's a young man, not even saved. He promoted him. Well, why would he promote him if he's not a good worker? Give him all that he had in another man's house or to put him in prison. Or to put him in the next hostile environment. Look at his behavior in the hostile environment. Look at his behavior in the hostile environment. Huh? Look at his behavior in the hostile environment. Look at, look at the behavior. Now, um, Genesis 39, they put him in prison now, but look at his behavior. Look at the 20th verse. Genesis 39, look at, he's in prison now, but look at his behavior there too. You see, if you're not faithful in part of house, you're not going to be faithful in prison. If you're not faithful there, you're not going to be faithful here either. But look at him in prison, a more hostile environment. Look at this, 20th verse. Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison and the place where the king's prisoner was bound, and he was there in prison. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and give him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. Isn't that something? Give him favor in light of the secret prison. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph and all the prisoners that were in the prison. Whatsoever they did, he was the doer of it. And the keeper of the prison looked not on anything that was under his hand, because the Lord was with him, and the Lord did what he did to prosper. You see, if he wasn't faithful in Potiphar's house, he wouldn't be faithful there either. But he started very small, but he was in everything. He go to prison again, he's faithful. What have we given to him? He's faithful. And here in that environment, now here the butler and the baker had a dream, and he interpreted the dream, and tell the butler, you're going to be restored, but the baker, you're going to be and so on. And when Pharaoh had a dream, he sent for Joseph. But because of faith in that man's house. So when you go to work for that person, wherever you're working, you be faithful as a Christian. And God going to promote you, maybe give you your own business. Yeah, you give me this other church building. It's not our building. It belonged to a church, but we faithful. We kept that house. I mean, they come to visit. They could not say a thing. They could eat off the floor. Why? Somebody else. Huh? How are you doing with other people's stuff? Look at Joseph in Potiphar's house. Look at him in prison. They put, they put him in charge of everything. Again, go to the top. If he got him with a bad attitude and he's just bitter because of what his brothers did to him, Potiphar's wife would tell a lie on him, and now he's in prison. A bitter young man, they wouldn't promote him. But throughout, good attitude. Can you see that? The book of Joshua. Let's turn the corner a little bit. Book of Joshua. Chapter 7. And look at Achan. Look at Achan. Joshua chapter 7. And look what God is saying to us. In his, look at somebody who is not faithful. And think about it sometimes when you do certain things, it affects not just you, but affects just about everybody else. I don't care. I don't care. Tell them, don't touch the accursed thing. But look at this. 
Joshua chapter 7 and look at verse 1. Look at verse 1. Look at this. But the children of Israel commit a trespass in their curse. Now notice, one man did it, but they said the children of Israel. Just think about that for a while. Look at it. But the children of Israel commit a, tres a trespass in their curse thing. For Achan, the son of Kami, the son of Zadi, the, the son of Zarov, the tribe of Judah, took up their curse thing, and the anger of the Lord kindled against the children of Israel. Now one person took up the entire tribe. You see? Because one person. You think about the Apostle Paul, one person being obedient to the things of God. Look at what we have from the book of Romans to the book of death. One Joseph working in Potiphar's house because he was faithfully promoted. One Joseph in prison had a good right to promote him. You just think about that. You just, now, he, because he was faithfully put him to run all of Egypt. And God even put him to recommend to run all of Egypt because you're making a mess in Potiphar's house. You make a bigger mess in prison. Why we put him there with a bad attitude? He'll run the country with a bad attitude. Huh? But look at this. Look at, look at that read. Think about this. One man. Look at it. But the turn of Israel committed a cursed thing. The cursed thing, Achan, the Achan. The turn of Israel, Achan. The turn of Israel, Achan. The son of Kami, the son of Zadi, the son of Zarob, the tribe of Judah, took up the cursed thing, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against the turn of Israel. Go down to the 20th verse of that same chapter. 20th verse of that same chapter. Sometimes you, not being straight and honest, you see, that, that, that's from within. That's from within. It affects the entire country. Now think of it. You just chew on this for a while. One man caused all that. When the children of Israel leave, it's just 600,000 plus a mixed multitude. So it could be a million and a half, maybe two million people. They stay in Kadesh Barnier for 40 years. From Kadesh Barnier, when they leave Kadesh Barnier, they cross the, Re the Jordan River and went to the Promised Land. And don't take their curse down. You take it and affect millions of people. Affected because of one man. They went up before a very small enemy, Ahai. They said, we just sent 3,000 to defeat Ahai. Ahai had 36 men and put them on the run. You see what sin will do? 36 men put 300, 3,000 on the run because of one man sin. You just think about that. Chew on that for a while. Go down to the 20th verse. Go down to the 20th verse. Joshua chapter 7 verse 20. Achan answered to Joshua and said, Indeed, I have sinned against the Lord and Israel, and thus I have done. I have saw among the spoil a goodly Babylonian garment, 200 shekels of silver, a wedge of gold, 50 shekels weight, and I have coveted it. That's the job. Covet. Have our natural desire for something that is not yours. Don't care about other people. Don't care about the kingdom. Forget the kingdom. Everybody go, I don't care about me. I covet. That word covet means our natural desire for something that is not yours. Covered that and took them, and behold, there was hid in the tent, earth in the midst of my tent, and the silver on it. So Joshua sent messenger and said, Run on, run to the tent, and behold, it was hid in the tent, the silver on it. And the dairy out of it, the midst of the tent, it brought on Joshua and all the children of Israel and for the Lord. Joshua said, All Israel he took Achan, and the son of Zara, and the silver, and the gold, and the garment, the wedge of gold, everything. Stone. One man. You just think about it. Just chew on that for a while. One man. Do something that cause all that. Look at something else. Not faithful. The unfaithful. And look at this here with Second Kings chapter five. And look at Gehazi. Look at Gehazi. You, know, you see people like that God will promote you. Why would he promote you? You'll just be a big thief. You'll just steal big stuff. Can't trust you. you won't turn their back. You take it. Tell. Don't take it. Be a curse and take it. Look at affect everybody. And nothing they can have no victory until they get rid of Achan. Second Kings chapter five, and the background of this story is that Naaman leave all the way to Syria and he come to Israel. May told his wife that there's a man in Israel that could take care of you. You're leprosy. And she tell it to her husband, he tell it to the king, he wrote a letter to the king of Israel, write the letter and take it to Israel and brought it to the king and the king said, I'm not a healer. Shepard here, he said, send him to me, send him to Shepard. Shepard sent Gehazi, tell him, I say, go dip seven times in Jordan. He went and dip seven times and he get the cleansing. So he got the cleansing when he got there and he wanted to give silver and gold and Elisha, the son of Shepard, said, we don't want to take that's fine. It's a time for silver and gold and so on. Keep it. So he kept it and he going back. But Gehazi say, uh uh, we can't let him go back with all that stuff. You see, again, you see, you see, you see, you're right next to the man of God, but where your heart is at. He's your boss. He said, leave it alone. You turn behind your back. Look at, look at this. You see, 
God can't promote people like this. Your boss said, leave it alone. Just leave it alone. Just leave it alone. Look at it. Second Kings chapter 5, look at verse 20. Gehazi, the servant of Elisha, the man of God, said, Behold, my master has spared Naaman the Syrian, not receiving of his hand that which he bought, but the Lord that liveth, I will run after him and, and take some out of him. And Gehazi followed after Naaman. When Naaman saw him running after him, he lighted down off his chariot to meet him and said, All is well. He said, There's all is well. My master has sent me. See? Why would you promote somebody like that? Uh, why would you promote somebody like that? My master sent me. Lying. Lying on his boss. Well, you see, people who behave like that, God didn't promote them to anything. You have to be like Joseph. No matter what it is, state. Shadrach, Meshach, you could turn up the heat, we're not going to bow. We're going to do right with God. Look at it. He said, All is well. Yes, my master had sent me. He said, Behold, they are coming from there. Um, come from Mount Ephraim to two young men and sons of the prophet. Give them, I pray thee, the talent of silver and two chains of garment. Naaman, I mean, he was so happy that he'll give them everything. Naaman said, Be content, take two talents. And he urged them and he bound the two talents of silver and the two bags, the two chains of garment, and laid them upon the two of his servants, and they bare them before him. And he went and he came to the tower and he took them off from their hands and bestowed them in the house and let them men go and he departed. And he went in and he stood before his master. Elijah said unto him, Where's come his dog? He said, Thy servant went nowhere, lying again. Stealing, lying. Huh? I don't know. He said unto him, Went not my heart with thee? When thou turnest from the chariot, the meaty man, is it not time to receive money and, and to receive garment, olive yard, vineyard, sheep, oxen, man servant, maid servant? Look at verse 27. See, God will never promote people. See, that's from inside. If you're unjust with little, you'll be unjust with much. If you're faithful with little, you'll be faithful with much. See, it's from inside. Can't promote people like that. Hallelujah. Look at something here. <coughs> Let's come a little closer to home. We're just about out of time. Look at, don't look at something here in Samuel. Look at 1 Samuel chapter 8. Let's just look at this. 1 Samuel chapter 8. 1 Samuel chapter 8. You see, God, in trial, God is looking. Whether it's your stuff or the people, he's looking. He's not going, God is, this. He's Satan will give his and he'll set you up. Not God. God doesn't work like that. You have to be faithful with little things. He's going to give you big things. We Lord that. He give them the talent to win and to get more. He said, well done, thou good and faithful servant. I'll give you more. Look at this here. 1 Samuel chapter 8. 1 Samuel chapter 8. Look at verse 1. And it came to pass when Samuel was old that his sons did with them judge over Israel. Oh, you put in a position to judge over Israel. You have to do what's right because it's first and first like Samuel. We know where Samuel began, where he came from. And look at it. The name of the first was Joel, and the name of the second was Abiah, and they were judges in Bathsheba. Look at the third verse. Look at the third verse. Look at the third verse. And the sons walked not in his ways or turned aside to lucre and took bribes and perverted judgments. See? Father turned their back, they go and take in bribe and looking for money. You may money, I'll, I'll, I'll buy the truth. I'll turn things around. Well, God can't promote people like that. See, that's from inside of them. Although the father is Samuel. Well, look at them. Well, they say something about Eli. The sons of Eli are the sons of Belial. Can you see that? Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So you see that? Amen. Look at this here. Look at Acts. Acts chapter 22. Taking bribe. And nothing new. That which was is that which is. That which shall be done is that which is done. People built like that inside of them. They just crooked from inside. Your father make them judge. I mean you put in a position to do right. But they're doing wrong. Look at this. Acts chapter 22. That which was, that which is, that which shall be done, is that which is done is nothing new under the sun. Look at this. Acts chapter 22. And, and look, look at the chief captain. Now, how did they get a job? I mean, you, you put in certain position and to, to be in trust. God did from heaven, people like this. I and mean, the people from the kingdom behave just like this. Look at this. Acts chapter 22. Look at two verses. Look at 27 and 20. Look at those two verses. The chief captain. The chief captain. Well, not just the captain, but the chief captain. Look at it. The chief captain came and said unto him, Tell me, are thou a Roman? He said, Yes, I am. Look at verse 28. The chief captain answered and said, With a great sum, I obtain freedom. Paul said, I was born free. He wanted a bribe. The chief captain wanted a bribe. Yeah, you give me some money, I'll let you out. 
So he don't care what you do if you kill a half a million people. I don't care. Give me some money, I'll let you out. I see people like that. God is not brought him his kingdom. You see Joseph. Now think about it. Joseph and them was not saved. So you can say, well, they were saved. They were on our side. Fine. But they were not saved. Achan was not saved. But there's some people who hold on some principle. Look at it. Look at, look at the chief captain. Look at verse 28. The chief captain answered, said, but a great sum I obtained their freedom. <laughs> you give me some money, I'll let you out. Look at the next one. Look at the governor. Look at the governor. I said, look at the governor. Acts chapter 24. Look at the governor. Governor also. The chief captain. Everybody wants money. You see? Money is the, the God. From that kingdom of that. Look at Acts chapter 24. Acts chapter 24. Look at verse 24. After certain days, Felix, Felix is the governor, came with his wife, Drusula, which was a Jewish, and they sent for Paul and heard him concerning faith on Christ. And the reason, uh, reason of righteousness and temperance, judgment to come, Felix trembled and answered Paul, Go thy way for a time, I'll, <laughs> I'll hear thee of, the, of thee. I hope, look at this, verse 26. He hoped also that money should have been given him of Paul, that he might lose him, whereof he sent and framed the orphanage and commune with him. So, the, yeah, the governor want money. He sent for, keep sending for Paul, he hope that Paul will give him some money, so he let Paul out. Oh, look at, oh, look at it, verse Verse 25, he reasoned with him with righteousness, temperance, and judgment to come. Felix trembled and answered, Go thy way for this time, for I will get the convenience and cooperate. But look at verse 26, I hope also that money should have been given him of Paul, that he might lose him, whereof he sent the more often and commune with him. One point, the governor, <laughs> the chief captain of the governor, they want money. Can you see that? Hallelujah. Let's close with this. Times is up. First Timothy. First Timothy, the governor want money. The chief captain want money. The judges want money. They want money. Like a Timothy, let's try to close with this. Time's up. Hallelujah. Don't know about you while cooking a meeting. The faithful servant and the unfaithful ones. First Timothy, chapter 6. And look at verse 5. First Timothy, chapter 6. Time's up. And verse 5. Look at it. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 5. Get somebody to write with somebody to write on. Hear what God is saying to us in his holy written precious word. Perverse disputing of men of corrupt mind, destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. For godliness with contentment is great gain. For you brought nothing into this world, and certainly you carry nothing out. Having food and raiment, let us dare be content. But they that would be rich fall into temptation and the snares into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which draw men into destruction and perdition. Look at verse 10. Look at the 10th verse. Put your finger in the 10th verse. For the love of money is the root of all evil, while some covet after. Remember, Achan, he covet. Huh? Remember, Gehazi, he covet. Yeah? While the love of money is the root of it, why some covet after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. We have to read those verses again. I said we have to read those verses again. See what God is saying to us in his holy, written, precious word. Look at those verses again. Yeah. The, chief, the chief captain won money, the governor won money, the judges won money. Yeah, I know. God couldn't trust those folks. Not on our side. First Timothy chapter 6 verse 5 with Purpose disputing of men of corrupt mind and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing in this world, and certain we carry nothing out. Having food and raiment, let us therewith be content. But they that would be rich fall into temptation and snares with many foolish and hurtful loss, which draw men into destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, while some covet after. Remember those who covet after? Have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Let's just do this in the book of Matthew. God warned this for somebody who just tuning in. Matthew chapter 16. Time's up. Matthew chapter 16. Time's up. Look at the 26th verse. I have a red date edition. The head of the church is speaking. Apostle Matthew's recording. Matthew chapter 6, look at the 26th verse. For what did profit a man, what did profit a man, if he shall 
gain the whole world and lose his soul. What if a man shall give in exchange for his soul? You can't buy that with money. You can't buy spiritual things with money. I say you can't buy spiritual things with money. And it will happen. For what it profited man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Accumulate all that money like the rich man and Lazarus. All that money. Sumptuously every day. Can't help him in hell. There's a great gulf fix. Those who go on there cannot come here. Those who come here cannot go on there. Great gulf fix. Can't help you. Can't help you. The love is for all money. Look at that. For what it profited a man shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul. For what a man shall give in action to his soul. You can't buy that. A trillion dollars can't buy that. Can't buy it. Amen. Come to our clone. So Father, we thank you for this opportunity and privilege that you give us. Thank you for your word that's still alive and powerful and sharper than any torch. So thank you for the victory in Jesus. His victory in order. Tonight, Lord, we give you all the praise, honor, and glory for what you did and what you will continue to do. We thank you, Lord, for everything. Put everything into your hand. All belong to you. Thank you, Lord, for the victory. His victory in order. We give you all praise, honor, and glory for all these things, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Good night. You have been listening to Pastor Randolph Ferdinand Teaches You from the World. To get a copy of your teaching or any of your other series, call 347-533-42771. 347-533-42771. Like us on Facebook or YouTube at H2C3 Ministry. Pastor Randolph Ferdinand Ministry. Visit our Sunday services at 1539 to 1547 Hitkin Ave. And Strauss Ave. 10 a.m. 1130 a.m. or 1 p.m. Bus 12 to PCC York and bus 14 to Hitkin Ave. For information, call 347-318-3394. H2CD Ministry. Go for the word.